to dedicate this award to my mother and my father. Um, it was my father, who is uh, Australian, who named me Maria de la Soledad Teresa Marchetti O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> then I got married to a waspy guy, and so it added on to that. Um, my parents are truly responsible for any, any success that I've had in journalism because I think they taught me and my five brothers and sisters what it means to, to stand out alone and, and decide to find your voice and stick up for people who don't have a voice. My mother is black and from Cuba and came to this country in 1957. My father is white and Australian. And when they first started dating, they used to go to daily mass together and my father would wind down the window of his car and say to my mother, do you want a ride? And she'd say, no, no, because you don't take a ride from a stranger. And she said one day, yes, I would. And that's how they started to date. <laughs> and, she, and she used to tell us a story about how when they first tried to go out to a restaurant together, no one would, would serve them. No, they couldn't get in. They went to restaurant after restaurant after restaurant on their first date. And everywhere they were turned away. They lived in Baltimore, Maryland, where interracial dating certainly was uh, completely frowned upon. And they decided, in, in, and my mother says that she took my, my father finally back to her apartment and whipped up um, black beans and rice for him and, um, and pork. And she said, uh, and the moral of that story was not for her daughters that there should be a, a search for racial equality. The moral of that story was if you could learn to cook, you would get a man. So learn <laughs> my recipes, please. Um, but, but truly, my mother then uh, was told, she decided to get married. Uh, they got married in 1958, where interracial marriages in Baltimore and uh, in, in Maryland were illegal. And so they drove to Washington, D.C., and they got hitched and then drove back to Baltimore. And uh, people would tell my mom, her friends would say, you know, you don't, you don't need to bring little Afro-Cuban nappy-headed children into this world. You should just not have any kids now that you've gone ahead and gotten married and it's illegal here. And I'm number five of six. So my mother was clearly not a very good listener, ever. Uh, and, and because of that persistence, because of that sense of sometimes you just have to go do what you have to go do, I think that's something that she passed along to all of her children. If there's anything that we've learned, if there's any lessons from 9-11 and any lessons from Hurricane Katrina, certainly for the media, it's that we need to be the voice of the voiceless. We need to ask the tough questions and follow up and be enraged and outraged when the public is also enraged and outraged. It is our duty. We don't get to just sit idly by and lob softballs at the administration, at the other side, at anybody. It's just not right. And so I am very, very grateful for this award. I thank you so much for the recognition. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.